What's known as father's vice princess's bestseller. Damn that little imp for going public with my secrets. He has no idea the chaos he's unleashed. Oh, fiddlesticks. Nothing will happen tonight. I'll think about it tomorrow. <laughs> now that Timmy's up at the main house, I'll have a nice, long, hot, relaxing shower. Wash my troubles right out of my hair. Your soul that goes up in flames tonight. I told you there wasn't anything to be afraid of. Right. I don't know why I was so freaked out before. I should have trusted you. Atta girl, Kate. Thanks to you, your cousin is going to be toast. Father's announcement tomorrow? Not a clue. Maybe he wants to make a toast to Ethan and Teresa since he can't be here in person. I realize tonight's festivities are in honor of my grandson's engagement, but there's something I'd like you all to hear that just can't wait. Is this exciting? Do you have any idea what this is all about? How could I? What exactly do you plan to do with Sheridan and Louise? Not with them, to them. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of it before. What a splendid idea. Instead of playing the tape privately for Louise as I'd intended, I'll play it publicly. What? Over the mansion speaker system, so everyone at the party can hear. <laughs> it's only fair to warn you, what you're about to hear will shock a number of you, even change your lives. reporter is in there. He must have snuck back into the house. He is breaking the news to Julian, even as we speak. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all we have to do is just sit back and watch. <laughs> I wonder if Julian's going to give Ivy time to pack a bag before he throws her butt out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gwen, do you realize everything in this house will soon be ours? including the men who live here. Cat got your tongue, Mr. Crane?
person that was father's home. He saw a shadow in the window. So why isn't he opening? Oh well. said that you finally realized that nothing's going to hurt you in your own room. Look, you don't know how much I really want to believe that. It's just that... Just that what? Nothing. I mean, what could possibly happen to me if you're right here, right? Exactly. Visions of hell raging in my closet. Just my imagination, right? Of course they were, silly. Flames reaching out to grab me, the voices crying out. I mean, what's wrong with me? Don't worry about it. Because if there was really something evil here, you'd notice it too, right? Yeah. Well, that's why I love you so much. What? I mean it. I mean, even if you weren't my cousin, I'd, I'd still want you around as a friend. Because I always feel really safe and secure around you. You do? Yeah. You've been a really good friend to me and Miguel, and... From now on, I'm just gonna try to be brave and strong like you, and not give in to all these irrational fears. Mr. Crane has to say it doesn't affect me. I'm going back to the Bennett's to check on Charity. Neil, please. Just wait. Depending on what Alistair Crane's announcement is, your brother or sister may mean you. Personally, I was stunned, even shocked, to come into this information. However, I feel it only fair and appropriate to share it with all of you, as many of you will be personally affected. father. Ethan Crane is Sam Bennett's son. You got it, Mr. Crane. You know, I, I, I'm sure this comes as quite a shock, but if I might have your reaction for our readers. So, how's he take I, I don't know. He hasn't said a word. No! We'll die! I'll give you something for your readers. Oh, this is even bigger than I thought of. You're gonna shoot Sam Bennett? If 
you'll all listen closely while you can draw your own conclusions when I'm finished. What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm about to play Sheridan's tape. Not now, Mr. Crane. Something urgent has come up. Nothing could be more urgent than ending my daughter's relationship with Luis Lopez Fitzgerald tonight. You may change your mind when you see this. Where did you get this? Look, something's wrong. Father never changes his mind in the middle of anything. I never understand why she cares about her father so much. It's not like he ever showed the least bit of interest in her. But he is still her father, Luis. Yeah. Yeah, you can call him that. I'm sure that your grandfather's all right, Ethan. Yeah, I hope so. This is so unlike him, though. The father never loses his cool about anything. Something major must have happened. Are you all right, sir? Uh, no, I'm not. But I'll be damned if I'll let any of them know that. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please forgive the interruption. I I'm afraid something's come up that requires my immediate attention. My announcement will have to wait. He was trying to cover it up, but I could hear the shaking in Alistair's voice. Maybe Julian knows what this is about. Where is he, anyway? Oh, now that you mention it, I haven't seen him in a while. Not that I blame you for wanting to whack the guy your wife had a son by. I mean, but hell, you know, I mean, Sam Ben is chief of police. That's going to be a little dicey to pull off, even for a crane. Who said I was going to kill Sam Bennett? You mean? What kind? A low-life dirtbag invades other people's homes with filthy, destructive lies fabricated just to sell newspapers. I dare you print that Ethan is not my son. I may not have won any Father of the Year awards, but I can tell you there's no man in this world who loves his son more than I do. Ethan is my firstborn. He is the fruit of my loins. He is the light of my life. How dare you say otherwise? I could sue you for slander. But that would take too long. Are there better ways to rid the world of vermin like you? But, but I didn't make it up. I mean, somebody sent us a story along with all the proof. I, I, I Whatever it right is here. you have, I'm sure it's as made up as the trash you printed. You made a big mistake crashing this party. You underestimated Julian Cray. But wait! I mean, at least look at this stuff. I swear to God, it, it, there's proof right here that your wife kept Ethan's paternity a secret for years. Yes? I mean, your old lady's obviously been carrying around a whopper the entire time you've been married. Well, it was known Ivy had a major secret. This possibly be it. Be it yourself. We didn't make this one up. On the top of the letter that your wife wrote Sam Bennett years ago, but she apparently never sent it. Says that Ethan's his son, but she's gonna pass him off as yours. Pass him off as a crane.
What? Why did all the bulbs go out? I don't know. Maybe it was a blood fuse or something. I can't be this jumpy when you're so nice to stay here so that everybody could go to that party. I didn't really feel like going out anymore. Are you sure that you don't think I'm completely crazy? You already said that I didn't. Thanks for not making me feel any dumber than I already do. From now on, I really have to start thinking more positively. Whenever I get scared, I'm just gonna put myself in your position and do what you would do. What do you mean? Well, for instance, if you thought that there was hell in your closet, I bet that you just March right over to that door, fling the doors open, and see how completely insane that idea was, right? Uh, <laughs> maybe. So if you can do that, then so can I. Baba Cho. <laughs> Father changes his mind, he knows where to find me. Mm. I'll get my bag. Stay close to her tonight, Louise. I was planning on it, but why are you asking? Are you still worried about her health? No, no, that's not what I meant. I just think that you are the best medicine for her right now, so you just stay close by her. Well, you don't have to worry about that. You would have a hard time finding me away from her. You ready? Yeah, let's just say goodbye to Ethan and Teresa. Oh, I already did, for both of us. Mm. Mm. Great. See you later. Enjoy the rest of your night, you two. Maybe your last happy one. Yo, Ethan. Haven't your grandfather's call off his uh, big announcement? You mind if I uh, talk to the DJ? About changing the music to something a little bit more, uh, you know, happy. Go for it, buddy. Ah, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Teresa, will you please cut it out? Nothing's going to turn into a pumpkin in the night. Thanks, sweet. I don't know why I'm so weirded out tonight. <laughs> Can I have this dance, Miss Lopez, with you? I would be honored, Ethan. At least Ethan is marrying the person he loves. If it weren't for Jillian and Alistair, I would be the one in Sam's arms now. See what I mean? I mean, there's enough documentation there to convince anybody that Ethan isn't your flesh and blood. You must know who sent you these. I swear to God, I haven't got a clue. I mean, these came into our office on a computer by email. And we tried to trace the sender, but, you know, no cigar. Could have come from anybody. Is that your wife's handwriting or not? Appears to be. This is a facsimile of the stationery she <clears throat> used before we were married. So it's the real deal then, isn't it? Yes? What the hell is going on, Julian? Ethan, Ivy, and Sam Bennett's son? You heard. Well, of course I did. If this turns out to be true, I swear I'm going to destroy everyone involved. Everyone, do you hear? Prove that you're right and everything's gonna be fine. 
Try and stop her again, and you're going in the closet with her! Thank you for staying. I'm still worried about Charity. You know, I, I think I'm gonna call her again. All right, why don't you use one of the phones upstairs? That way you're not in the way of any of the guests. Okay, Mom. Do you mind if I cut in? My husband seems to have abandoned me in the middle of a party, and I just love this song. Would you mind terribly, Grace? <clears throat> oh, of course not, Ivy, as long as you promise to give him back. We well, you know I have a better idea. What do you say I'll go find Julian? And that way we can all dance with who we're married to. Well, I'm afraid you won't be able to find him, Sam. I've looked everywhere. And and shouldn't Grace be off of her feet while with the little one coming? I mean, you really don't want to overdo it, especially in the first stages of pregnancy, do you? Oh, well, you have a point, Ivy. <laughs> Thank you for being so considerate. Grace, let me go sit with you. No, no, no. I'm just I'm going to go freshen up. Dance with Ivy. Are you living since he left you behind. You see, Sam? Your wife has given his permission. Now you have no excuse. Better tell me the truth before I fall. There's got to be a mistake, Father. Ethan must be my son. That's not what this pathetic excuse for a newspaper says. If this is true, if Sam Bennett turns out to be Ethan's real father, you're an even bigger jackass than I've always suspected. A cuckold in every sense of the word. It would mean Ivy's played you for a fool since your very own wedding night. This isn't a very good time to talk, Father. The tabloid reporter's still here. Janet, put me on speaker. Get off the crane estate before I sick the Rottweilers on you. But, sir, I... I, I now! Or I'll see to it the rag you work for never sells another slimy copy. Now that Alistair knows about Ethan, it is all over for Ivy. <laughs> and Teresa. Oh, her too. I mean, once Ethan finds out that she knew all along that he was Sam Bennett's son, and she kept it from him, oh, she is going to be out on the street faster than you can pick out a new wedding gown. <laughs> We better get down to the party so we can act as surprised as everyone else. Is he gone? Yes, Father. You don't honestly believe this is the truth. It's my pride and joy. He has to be my son. Why? Because you want him to be? Get over yourself, Julian. Ethan being a Bennett by birth would explain everything. The way Ivy's fussed over him above all the other children his entire life. Ethan's penchant for doing the right thing in the face of all our teachings. But what bothers me most is that I didn't see it first myself. <laughs> I've got to hand it to Ivy. She kept her secret masterfully. Are you still there, Julian? Yes, Father. Then listen carefully. I want you to go back to the party and find out if this filthy rag is telling the truth. And if it is, then I want you to bring me your wife's treacherous head. didn't hear Timmy. Anyway, Timmy's staying next door, and he thought he'd bring you some read. 
Actually, it's a masterpiece of his own making. <laughs> Jimmy was the creative inspiration for the best-selling blockbuster, Hidden Passion. Well, Jimmy Bob copied just for you, sir. Sir? Taking a shower in a musty old hotel, just like the one in that old Hitchcock movie. Oh, that's a sort of day in a bath. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Silly me, Tabitha Lennox. <laughs> Tabitha Lennox, menace to the world. Giving herself the willies over an old motion picture. Good thing Timmy isn't here. Oh, oh. Never let me hear the end of it. Timmy? Timmy? Is that you? I thought you were up at the main house visiting old Dad. Timmy? second I really thought there was gonna be something in there yeah well what happened to the screaming souls of the damned in the flames of hell I can't tell you how much better I feel No interruptions. You promised me. If anyone knocks on this door, you are not going to answer it. Oh, they are mm. going to have to break the door down to keep me away from you. Mm. So nothing's mm. going to interrupt you. No, Megan. Nothing. Mm. I love you. Not as much as I love you. Often as I've been a guest here, I can't remember where the powder room is. You can use the one in the east wing, corridor upstairs, the third door on your left. Laura, can I ask you something? Sure. You've been close to Ivy for years. Oh, yes. Since she was a little girl. Then you were with her when she made that terrible decision. To leave the boy she loved and marry Julian? That's correct. I can't imagine how terrible it's been for her. I mean, to be living with a man she doesn't love when her heart still belonged to the young man in her past. Well, there was nothing to do, Grace. After Ivy married Julian, the young man made a life for himself. A good life for the woman he loves. But still, I... It's over for Ivy. I think that one day she and her first love will be reunited. Oh no, that must never happen. Why do you say that? I mean, Laura, I, I just have a feeling that when a love is that strong, nothing can ever make it go away. What about the man's wife? If Ivy resumed their love affair, it would destroy her. Yes, it's a real tragedy. No matter how you look at it, somebody's heart is going to get broken. I he's my friend. And I have to say that I'm, I'm rooting for her. I mean, you know, 
I don't know this other woman from Adam. not here now. You'd have to be blind not to see that Ivy's in love with Sam. Or someone who's so in love with him she doesn't see what's right in front of her nose. Oh, Julian, there you are. I, I wanted to tell you what a wonderful party this is. And you and Ivy must be so proud of Ethan tonight. Your son is a lovely young man. My son... Yes. I, I wanted to tell Sam that he and Ethan must have just gotten off on the wrong foot. Well, perhaps in time they can bury the hatchet and become closer. Ethan and Sam. Perhaps they will. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? They're dancing together. Oh. Don't worry. I gave them permission. They do dance well together, don't they? Perhaps you and I should be Perfect timing. Ivy is in Sam's arms, just as Julian is about to hit ten on the Richter scale. I'm sorry, but even if I try to make peace with him, he wouldn't accept it. Just don't get along, that's all. But it is good to see my mother looking so radiant. I can't remember the last time I saw her this happy. Now look at the look on my father's face. It's so intense. Special martini scent. That Timmy could use oneself. If Sir would just point Timmy towards the bar. Oops. Wrong 
door. It's like the powder room. I think this is Mrs. Crane's room. We could probably use hers. You know, I'm trying to reach your house, but nobody's answering. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure the girls unplugged the phone just so they could tune in early. Yeah, I think I'm just going to swing by and make sure. Leave Teresa on her big night? I mean, Louise already left. I'm sure she'd really like it if one of her brothers stuck around to the end. Yeah, I guess. There we go. Don't worry about the girls. Believe me, this is one of those once-in-a-lifetime nights where nothing terrible is going to happen to anybody. Father looks terrible. I wonder what's going on. I'm sure it's nothing bad. You know, it is almost midnight and nothing bad has happened. You're a tramp, Ivy. A tramp and a slut! <laughs> <laughs>